Hey, yo, YouTube, what's good? It's your girl, Dom, and I'm back with another video. Listen, so today's story, bro, I came across this on my YouTube scrolls, and it caught my eye because it's like I'm also adopted. But anyway, family adopt a five-year-old girl, but when she learns to speak English, they discover the horrifying truth. I really hope it's not, like, terrible, terrible, terrible. Even though I know it probably is, it's just going to break my heart. But anyway, man... Before we get into this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, hit the notification bell so you know when we drop the next video, man. Let's get into it. Please, don't be so terrible. Please. Many Americans are turning to overseas adoption to fulfill their visions for their family. Although they have good intentions, they are guided by international adoption agencies to find children who need homes. One Ohio couple went through this process, believing they'd found a daughter who would complete their family. Mm. Little did they know, she had a terrible secret. Hello, wonderful people. I'm Scott Leffler for Wonderbot. And here is, family adopts a five-year-old girl. But when she learns to speak English, they discover the horrifying truth. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. When Adam and Jessica Davis decided they wanted to adopt a child, they were overjoyed. They already had four children of their own, but they were growing up. It was time for another child. However, they didn't think it made sense to have another biological child when there were so many unwanted children. In America. They also didn't need to adopt a baby. Outside of America. They decided to search for an agency to help them adopt internationally. Why? The Davises started working. This is with me the personally. Is my personal opinion because I was adopted. So like, if if nobody like if nobody used the to, to get the kids here, I wouldn't have had a house. I wouldn't have had somewhere to live growing up. I'd have been a group home type stuff. So it's like it don't make sense for you to go to another country when you got kids in your country, probably in your state, most likely in your city that needs your help, and you choose to go outside. That called European Adoption Consultants. The goal of the agency was to give orphans the opportunity to find parents in America. That seemed like a worthy goal to the Davis family. After a short period of time, the agency called to tell the couple about a girl they located. Her name was Namata, and she desperately needed a home. The agency said Namata's father had died and that her abusive mother wanted nothing to do with her. If she did not leave Uganda, she would have no future. Although the agency said there was a fee of $150,000, the Davises decided money didn't matter. They already thought of Namata as a member of the family. They now, I am not saying that, that little girl shouldn't have got adopted. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the first option shouldn't be to go international. The first option should be to see what child in this country needs help. Like, it doesn't... <laughs> I guess this is a sore spot for me. Don't make sense. To Uganda to pick her up, but they had no idea that not you spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a fee. Do you know how many kids they could feed that are are that need adoption right now? That need to be adopted right now? It's crazy. Everything was as it seemed, <laughs> bro. This was in two thousand fifteen. When they met Namata, they loved That's her. That's good. She found that she that they in found a terrible home place for her. called God's Mercy Orphanage. Still sucks. The couple though. knew they had to get her away from a filthy group home. They finalized the adoption, and soon they returned to America with a new member of their family. Adam and Jessica introduced Namata to their four children. They nicknamed her Mata. It felt like a perfect fit. No one suspected anything was wrong. Mata quickly became accustomed to life in the U.S. Because she, she was happy well she got out. And learned English. But as her English improved, so did her ability to communicate something big. One year later, Mata loved her new family and also had much better English skills. She started referring to her old life with details that didn't make sense to Adam and Jessica. She discussed her mother, her village, her siblings, and how much she loved them. This didn't match the story about Mata's life that was in her adoption file. A horrible revelation dawned upon the couple. Namata was never an orphan. 
She lived with a loving family, and they never wanted to give her away. The family was baffled about how she ended up at the orphanage. The couple knew they needed to do something, so they called Karen Riley, an activist who reunites trafficked children with their mothers. Riley agreed that this story was the media often ignores a prime example of a side of trafficking that Riley told the Davises that she'd found Namata's mother, and they immediately set up a Skype call so that she could know that Namata was okay. Namata's mother... Okay, so that whole situation low-key was a blessing in disguise because if they weren't looking to adopt the child they wouldn't have found the child that was being trafficked and you wouldn't been able you know what i'm saying that child probably went to somewhere to somebody else who really didn't care but had no concern about their parents and how how they was missing their child ain't that crazy see but this is another reason why i say you should stick to to the local adoptions it just makes more sense to me uh, to me, that's my own personal opinion. Had a harrowing story. The adoption agency had pulled a common scam in international adoption. They arrived in Namitz's village and started offering to match children with sponsors in the U.S. who would take their children to America for an education. The parents believed their kids were going to school. Why is it they always trying to scam return. somebody? They did not know that the agency was taking custody and selling the children to unsuspecting families in the U.S. Adam and Jessica were in agony because they loved Mata, but she belonged with her family. And she does. They made the decision to take Mata back to her family. They had an amazing reunion in Uganda. They were ecstatic to see her again. They were grateful to the Davises for doing the right thing and bringing her home. European adoption consultants had been doing this for years. Unfortunately, most children were not returned to their homes. The FBI raided their office and stopped them from transferring child guardianships. Although they're out of business, other nefarious adoption agencies continue to scam people and steal their children. The Davis family completed a miracle by sending Namata home. They're committed to working with advocates like Riley to reunite more families and their children. This is a cautionary tale about working with groups demanding large sums of money with a story of child abandonment. That's so fucked up. So you basically stole the child from her parents and her family to adopt her in America illegally. That is some... Yo, why are people trying to scam people, bro? That's so fucking trifling, bro. Bro, you the lowest scum of the earth for doing that, bro, man. That is so fucked up. Ooh, that's so fucked up. Ooh, that just made me mad, bro. <laughs> Ooh, that just made me mad. Anyway, man, uh, go in the comments, bro. Tell me what you think about this video. Personally, I think it's insane, bro. It's crazy what people would do to other people, to a human being, bro. Anyway, man. <laughs> I don't even... Bro, hit the like and subscribe button, bro. Peace out, man. I'm blue.